growth and satisfaction are like, you know, potentially inversely related. So, but it's not a problem to be solved. Do you see what I'm saying? It's just a dichotomy to be managed. It's something that like, hey, I have a growth mindset. I want to be here, but I'm also can be grateful for the things that I have, right? And they might not happen simultaneously, right? You can, a lot of your growth can come from discomfort, pain, dissatisfaction, um, fear of failure, and all those things, as long as you use them for feel, who cares? There's no rules there, right? You are now tuning in to The Relentless Project. Real people, real stories, real life. What's up, brother? How you doing? What's up, my brother? Doing great. Can you hear, yeah. can you, can you hear me all right? Perfect. You're doing great. All right. For those of you who don't know, this is Bernardo. He was on the uh, podcast in the early series. And if you listen to that episode, we had an abrupt ending because his phone died. So we got that figured out, right? <laughs> we got all that figured out. Oh, hey, look what I got for you. Hold on, let me move my... Oh, nice. There yeah, you go. It's a, it's I told him it's a date. He said, now. make That's sure you have good. a candle. Yeah. I got Perfect. it for you That's here. Right. So, I mean, we left off. We were talking about some good stuff. Um, we left off, you know, talking about GST and policing and the culture. And why don't we, why don't we talk? Why don't we start with that? Um, you know, for those of you who don't know, he's one of the GST instructors. He was my instructor when I went through the Gracie survival tactics. And that's, I'll let you explain what, what is Gracie survival tactics, GST, Go ahead and go off on that. Yeah, so Grace Survival Tactics is the Gracie model applied to law enforcement, right? The main idea being the objective is to, uh, if we can verbally de-escalate, we'll verbally de-escalate, right? So we have verbal de-escalatory strategies. And when that fails, we need to have physical de-escalatory strategies, right? And we call that uh, uh, basically dynamic de-escalation, right? It's our ability to control and apply pressure and we call it volume control we're going to apply pressure depending on how much is required to keep the officer safe to keep the subject safe to follow departmental policy and ultimately the objective is to have the community like like rejoin forces with the with the civilians right which is actually one of the perks of having a civilian teaching right often i have a lot of law enforcement with me but also i'm a civilian and one of the things that I can bring into the table is I would deem this acceptable to me if I were to be arrested this way. So all our programs develop from law enforcement to law enforcement. That's kind of our thing, right? And I don't claim to. I never arrested anybody. I have been in a lot of fights. I have controlled a lot of people. But I don't, I don't have that, you know, industry experience of that. But I, what I can bring is perspective, right? Things that we find acceptable as a community, as a whole, right? Can we join? Like, what are the thing, What are the best practices on the law enforcement side that can be joined with the civilian side? Because ultimately, that's the objective, right? Is to bridge that gap. The more we bridge that gap, the more money we can we can make. The more mo uh, funds we can we can generate. The easier it will be to your presence as a function of your authority will be respected. So that's kind of what the goal is: is to like reconcile the civilian and the law enforcement world. Kind of bridge that gap, huh? You you uh, made an interesting point saying civilian instructors. Um, you know, with anything MMA, training, jiu-jitsu, defensive tactics, there's that argument, right? Like civilian instructor versus law enforcement yes. instructor. Um, you know, a lot of law enforcement guys will say, well, law enforcement should be teaching law enforcement. Um, yep. However, the issue with that is law enforcement is so behind with training mm -hmm. that – it's hard to create that buy-in when you have someone telling you what to do and when to do it. Do you find it more difficult to get that buy-in as a civilian when you're instructing a group of law oh, enforcement? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly harder, right? Because I have more barriers to break to a degree, primarily because you're expecting like, right. Somebody to have a ton of experience in the field, but I'm a messenger. I'm a relayer of information, right? That's all I do. I never created any of the techniques that are there. I don't claim to have, you know, developed anything in that field, right? If anything, the people that developed this were instructors that brought in best practices from all over the country and from all over the world. And that, like, 
Frankenstein got put in an organized fashion that anybody can learn. But the vast majority of our instructors are actually law enforcement. I'm one of the few civilians. We have Alan Manganello, 27 years on SWAT. Uh, we have uh, Tom, uh, Tom Chacorel, he 23 or 24 years, Montgomery County, huge agency. Uh, and then we have all the people that Grace University brings in as consultants and as people that help us learn, right? So we also have Charlie Fernandez. He was in Arlington PD for 20 plus years. So our instructor cadre, the vast majority, are actually law enforcement. And then we have the occasional civilian. But the, the again, the point being, we bring in a different perspective. You know, they've been doing law enforcement. They learn from law enforcement, you know. And lot, most of their, their training, regardless, came from civilians. Like, <laughs> it just gets adapted to law enforcement because the objective is different. So. Can you see me? I cannot see you right now. Of course. Um, I'll keep going. Uh, it's always technical difficulties, but it's it's the point that's of remaining right. relentless, right? That's the that's, that's right. the beauty of the show. That's right. Um, but yeah, so uh, on that even on that point, right? Like the only true difference is when when jujitsu was first introduced to the law enforcement community was jujitsu like four cops. Does that make sense? So we basically taught them the things that worked for us in the ring, the things that worked for us in the street fights, the things like that was what was taught for police, right? And now it's it's specifically two cops, right? Like it, it's basically like we now all the techniques became tailored for the street, being the considerations being we have to have weapon retention, we have to distance management, and it has to have be a this uh, natural body movement. Otherwise, if if you don't have a, a degree of weapon retention, you can't do the technique, right? The technique might look cool, but if you can't pull it off, they can take your gun out. It's no good. If you don't have consideration for punches, which is the main thing about distance management, it's also no good because if they get hit in the face and knock you out, also excluded. And if five people out of the 500 people that are going to go back to your agency and teach can do the technique, that's, that technique is no good either, right? So universal applicability for under the umbrella of natural body movements, that has to be a pre-requirement. So. Well, you make a good point. What do you say to people who... You know, law, uh, law enforcement now is starting to jump into this jujitsu train. Jujitsu has been around for a long time, but now we see a lot of uh, law, uh, cops, you know, COs, anyone, anyone involving general public. I mean, I, you guys are even teaching like nursing classes, like nurses yeah. and, and hospital staff. Um, uh -huh. What do you tell people who say, you know, I don't have a jujitsu background, no martial arts background. How how difficult is it for them to grasp GST principles? Oh, if they're attending a GST, GST, particularly GST Level 1, which is our introduction course, uh, that course is meant for beginners. It is meant for day zero jiu-jitsu people. Day 1,000 black belts will benefit from the course, but day one people will benefit the most, arguably, right? Because, I mean, you, you've attended, you can, you can testify for it, but the delta between somebody that started and in the end of that week, they are indistinguishable from when they started. It's unbelievable. It, it is it is interesting uh in the specific class you're referring to that i attended we had what 110 people 106 and i remember that name. <laughs> dude you guys are nuts 106 remembers names um they do want to they went around remembering every single person's name like that still blows my mind um where was i going with this oh yeah you guys actually split the class you guys raise hey how many of you have jiu-jitsu experience how many of you have no experience and then you yes. split the class and it was 50 50. Yep. You know, 50, 50 percent of the class dabbled in jujitsu. The other 50 percent mm -hmm. never had any any uh, training. And by the end of it, you would think everyone was at some level in jujitsu, which mm -hmm. technically you are because you're doing five yep. days, eight hours. How many classes mm -hmm. is that? Because usually classes are an hour, two For hours sure. when you go to train. So you're getting a upfront jujitsu lesson mm -hmm. that you can yeah. apply to the street. Um, what does it take to become a gst instructor um you guys are not just gracie affiliated mm -hmm. but you're you're yeah. you're in this realm of law enforcement specifically and then you're running these classes all over the country what's it take to become one of these instructors so the first thing that we are looking for right so there is three prongs on the lead level and there's uh, on the assistant level is you have to have attended one of the courses right so if you attended one of the courses you can start thinking about coming in helping out we even have this program where if you previously attended a course, let's say you attended a level two, you're welcome to come help out on level one. Once you help out enough times, you can then become what we call an elite assistant. Right now, you're a paid assistant because you're an asset to the class. So once you do enough of those, um, and then we start going into the 
the prongs of like what is required for you to become a GST lead instructor, right? So if you want to be a GST lead, you have to be one of three things or all three things, right? Excuse me, you have to be two or three things or all three. So you have to have command of the room. You have to be able to speak. You have to be able to control the, the, the energy and shape the environment, which is arguably the thing that we do best. And that's a non-negotiable, right? So the way that we... We connect the way that we interact. This is very, I, I, I like to believe that that's one of the things that sets us apart from most uh, law enforcement programs out there. And uh, the second prong is you either have to be a really, really, really exceptional black belt or you have to have been in law enforcement for a really, really long time. So uh, because you can then demonstrate the techniques, you can relate to them in a different level. You know, I love when my assistant is a long time law enforcement person because then I defer all the use of force. All those talks can get deferred to somebody that's actually been through them, had to use it, had to write the reports. That's all the experience, right? So we love to have that. And often that is the case, right? If, if the lead is not law enforcement, the assistant will be law enforcement 15, 20 plus years and vice versa. If the lead is law enforcement, we'll sometimes try to bring a civilian in just to bring a different perspective. Hey, what did you think about this? What did you think about that? The talks end up becoming very, very interesting. But to become a lead, you then have to have those things. You have to have attended and helped with several of the GSTs. You also have to understand the formula. You have to understand the concepts and how we teach. And it's, I mean, you, you, you've you seen it. So uh, the, the all of those talks, every single thing there is scripted and it's thought out. And you, you notice how we, we have the book open, but our eyes are on you guys and we're paying attention to everything. Cause yeah, I don't think I've seen you guys refer to the book at all. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, as yeah. you're talking, you flip the page and you're just like, I'm like, how do they, <laughs> it's like inside out. Um, yeah. yeah you, you, mentioned, you mentioned earlier being a, a high level black belt uh, for our jujitsu listeners. Um, you know, we have people who listen from, from a facet of schools and, and, and trade. So what, what does a black belt mean to, or let's go through the belt levels. Like, yeah, like, cause I, you, you've been doing this a long time and I like hearing different instructors. Like we'll, we'll get back to GST, but like kind of different instructors and pick their brain on what they're looking for as they're promoting, as they're striping up. Um, what do you look for? Uh, someone, if someone comes in, they have their white belt. What do you look for in striping them up in the white belt? And then the consecutive belts after that, mm -hmm. uh, is striping them up at a, at the white belt level. I'm less concerned about, uh, uh, I'm more concerned about attendance and consistency than proficiency because it's so varied, right? Particularly at that stage. Uh, I will tell you, I don't have an exact count for, oh, you're a one striper, you're a two striper, you're a three striper, four striper, right? But I will tell you that I will not put a blue belt on you if I feel like you cannot defend yourself against a larger person than you. That to me is a base, base, base. If you can't defend yourself, if somebody got, if we were to go down right now and I get a 200 pound dude and you're 170 and you cannot defend yourself, I'm not putting a, I'm not putting a butt on you. I'm not, I'm, you're not going to get to blue belt. That was Elliot Grace's standard. And I like that we fought for that standard because I believe that to be true. Actually, I see that I, I train at a lot of gyms. Um, my home gym is Henzo, uh, Stout, mm -hmm. Henzo Gracie. Yep. And that's, that's kind of their motto too. And, and before you can attend an open mat, you have to be mm -hmm. a three stripe white belt because to them that shows yeah. Yeah. you've been able to defend yourself safely enough and, mm -hmm. and practice these techniques safety uh, safely enough where they don't have to have their eye on you all the time. Um, yeah. and then, yeah. you know, to go to intermediate classes, the same thing to go to advanced. Now you have to be a three stripe blue belt. So they, it's kind of like these, but there's to stripe up. There's no, like, there's no formula. It's dependent. It's, it's no. culture dependent. It's instructor dependent. So I always like to hear, um, other instructors and, uh, viewpoints. What is your, what is your def definite when you're promoting a blue to a Brown, no blue to a purple, uh -huh. what is your, what are you looking for in that asking for a friend? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you, at blue belt, you should have an unbelievably annoying defense. Sticky. You are sticky. You are <laughs> annoying. You got good hands. You tough to break through your defenses. That should be your kind of journey as a blue belt, right? Amazing defense. You have some solid passing, right? You have some solid guard retention. Your escapes have to be amazing, amazing. You should spend a lot of time on the bottom. Why? Because you're spending there organically, right? You don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, your head, your top loader. You got a lot of belts above you, so you tend to be defending more than you're attacking. 
Absolutely. And that's the best time for you to develop your defense, right? Can you develop a strong guard? Can you develop a strong defensive game? Can you develop a strong skate game, right? Can you develop comfort on the bottom of the fight, right? That to me, when you really, really, really own that, you can, you're ready for your purple. All right, one more question on the belts. What is the hardest belt to promote from? Purple. To get out of? Purple. Blue to purple is a monstrosity. <laughs> because your delta of learning is, is, is very interesting. So from nothing to something, you learn very fast. Like you, you kind of learn a little bit slow. And then because you're learning how your body works, right? You haven't used this thing efficiently. So you're just kind of figuring out how that works, right? So up to blue belt is kind of figuring out how the machinery works. And then at blue, you're like, okay, I can use this tool now. And then at blue belt, you you start just working on defense, working on escapes, working on developing some a little bit of an offense game, but very, very little. And what happens there is people become incredibly frustrated because you, you're moving much, much slower because you're working with better and better people, right? So... Particularly if you're school, like we do, we separate white belts from blue and above, right? So you don't get to, you know, when you are when you get your blue belt, you don't get to beat up on the white belts. You're still at so the bottom of the food chain. You're like at the bottom. You, it's almost like you, you you went from, you know, from from elementary school to like, you know, you're in middle school now, but it's middle school, high school, college, and master's and PhD all in one class. So <laughs> That's funny you mentioned that because that's so true. When I like all, when I became a, when I started jujitsu, I, all I wanted was my blue belt. You know, I was like, dude, when I get yeah. my blue belt, I'm going to be this, 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 this. this. Mm -hmm. Then I got my blue belt and it's the same thing. It's like, oh man, like I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, well, that's human nature, right? To a degree on anything, right? As soon as you move the goalpost, that's the new normal, right? You're going to do that forever. And that's perfectly fine. You see that? Yeah. It's perfect. That's perfectly fine. It's expected, right? You like, can you imagine if you're a baby, right? And your baby crawls for the first time or your baby walks for the first time. What do you say? Yay. Best day ever. Yeah. Right? Like, man, your kid's walking, right? If you walk this morning, what do I tell you? Nothing, bro. Well done. Like, you know, you don't get a pat on the back here. Nobody claps for you when you're walking. Why? Because you move the, you keep moving the goalposts. Right? You do that with everything in life, right? You do that with your salary. Once you get a new salary, you don't want to go back to, you know, Sometimes, like I see people all the time. Oh, I want to make a hundred thousand. They make a hundred thousand. They're like, oh, now I want to make two hundred. They make two hundred. If I send them back to a hundred, they'll be pissed. Yeah, I want to be a millionaire. Miserable. Then I become a millionaire. Then I want to be a billionaire. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Because fulfillment is partially internal, right? Like, of course, there's a baseline that needs to happen in order for you know, money will make you happy, but money problems will make you unhappy. So, uh, it would that be the same? In you know, it will be the same. It's just there's always going to be somebody better than you, right? Unless you're like freaking Gordon or something. Uh, there's always going to be somebody better than you. And it's just a function of time before somebody gets better than him, right? He will get old. He will get like in, I don't know, in 50 years, uh, <laughs> somebody's going to figure <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, he's still to, on his prime. You know? He's got time. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, it's going to be crazy. But, uh, but yeah, but there's something to be said about, like, you know, everybody has their time at some point and somebody's going to get better than you. And if you keep comparing yourself that way, it's just going to be a, it's just going to be problematic. But they, like, <sighs> Growth and satisfaction are like, you know, potentially inversely related. So, but it's not a problem to be solved. Do you see what I'm saying? It's just a dichotomy to be managed. It's something they're like, hey, I have a growth mindset. I want to be here, but I'm also can be grateful for the things that I have, right? And they might not happen simultaneously, right? You can, a lot of your growth can come from discomfort, pain, dissatisfaction, um, fear of failure, and all those things. As long as you use them for feel, who cares? There's no rules there, right? So it's oh, better than dude, it's better than having no fuel, right? You'd be like, then you get mad. Like I, I see this way too often, where people are like, oh, you should never use like fear of failure as your driver, or you should never use like, um, like uh, fear of rejection as your driver. If that's all you got, you better freaking use it. Do you see what I'm saying? Why not? And then people because they feel shame for using it, for using that fear of of, of failure, they now have additional shame on top of the fear that didn't go away regardless. So the fear is still going to be there, but now you also have inaction, so you don't do anything. That's crazy. That's worse. Go freaking use your fear. Go make it happen. And then you're going to be good. Yeah. Bro, we There's just no went from jujitsu huh? to life philosophy. I know, bro. That's, we why, going, that's yeah. why I love talking to you, man. I, I love talking to guys like you because 
I, I'm, I'm that dude. I like to pull from everything, you know, and jujitsu is such a great metaphor for life because before jujitsu, I, I, I fought a lot and I was like, man, I can fight, you know? And then I had to learn how to control a body. And I'm like, I can't control a body. And then you have fear, <laughs> you have, you know, you get this feeling of you're not enough. You're not, but then mm -hmm. once you start seeing progress in that, you start getting comfortable. Right. And then you start feeling good. And then you you forget, you forget, oh man, that I was ever scared. I was ever, and then you go against someone and they hit you with reality again. But that's the same thing with life, right? We get comfortable with our job. We get comfortable with our lives. We get comfortable. And then something happens and we're like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, it's like you forget where you come from, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why I like that you guys are so deep. It's not just jujitsu yeah. with you. It's not just, it's this never just exactly jujitsu. Like, hmm? That's exactly why it's a dichotomy to be managed, right? If you go too deep on one way, end or the other end, if you go too deep into like, even though gratitude is a tough one because you can always, almost always find gratitude, but it, it, you can go far on that side enough that if you're only grateful for the things that you have and you never want anything past that, you become complacent by definition. And if you only strive and you're never grateful for the things that you have, you're constantly unhappy. So the question is, can you allot time, right? Like for, for each, you know? Oh, I have, to, I have moments that you're like, you sit a little bit, you're like, man, I live a dope life. And you're like, yeah. ah, and you own that feeling, right? You sit with it and you're like, ah, oh, this is dope. Life's amazing. All the things that are happening, all the good things that happen to me, like what are the odds of this happening? If you told yourself, 10 years ago that you'll be doing what you do now with the way that you're doing now, would you believe it? And you're like, oh, I'd be like, it's a lie. Yeah. I'd be like, it's a lie. I always, that's a a lie. Yeah. I always ask the, uh, people that question it's, do you step back and look at what you've built? Like, bro, you should, how long have you been training with or training with, with the Gracie's and, and especially the GST program? Mm -hmm. So 2011, I started jujitsu. 2014 was my very first GST that I attended to just as a like coach slash, like kind of help out. I was in Virginia Beach with Frank Cucci, amazing guy. And then uh, Henry came in, it was dope. And it was my first exposure to that program. I'm like, man, there's something here. And then I've been doing a couple of GSTs a year since, very much on like a fifth assistant, right? Second assistant, third assistant, just kind of in the background. And then in 2019, uh, as things progressed, right? Got my black belt, like uh, started training, like started going to Austin, right? Training with those guys. That's when Hannah was like, bro, I've been hearing very good things about you. You're really, really pushing the, 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 the even the organization forward to a degree with what's possible under that CTC model. Because if you, on a small CTC in Virginia with 200 people, if you can go train with those guys, then that's a testament to, to a degree to the program and how you train and, how, and what's a, possible within that realm, right? So because you're pushing that, we want you to like, and you've been doing the GSTs for a very long time, we want you to start paying you and helping you with the GSC, so. And that's sort of right, right there when I started. So. Dude, GST is uh, what, what I love about GST the techniques, digestible, you can use them, yeah, all that stuff, yada, yada, right? But yeah. it's the teaching methodology, the way you guys presented that material. And, and I instruct, right? I instruct for my department, I instruct for, for other agencies. And one thing I took out of there most was the, te the teaching methodology. I actually use mm -hmm. that. When yeah, I, yeah. You, when I teach other classes and like our department Perfect. and stuff like, because the house method, right. And, and yeah, like, like I'll, I won't divulge into that. I'll let people take the class for it, but, um, mm -hmm. it, it helps you become a better instructor. And that's what I try to tell people. It's like, you're going to go in here. You're going to learn techniques. Yeah. You can go on YouTube. You can go anywhere. You can learn mm -hmm. techniques. Um, you get a lesson plan. That's something you can't just get on YouTube, but like the, the most valuable thing you can get is exposure to these instructors exposure to other people who train learn are in this realm and then the teaching methodology like that, that like you can't teach that from a powerpoint you can't teach that that's sure. something you have to attend to it to to learn and, and that's that was probably one of my biggest takeaways from the gst class is how you guys instruct how you guys handle people how you guys handle um objections right that, that's one thing you uh, one mm -hmm. thing you guys did a lot was like you would show the technique you demonstrate it and then you would ask people like what what would you this is the scenario what would you do and you would listen to people's stuff you give them feedback and then you'd show them why that may not work or why mm -hmm. it may work there was a couple of times yeah. where i was like yeah no that's a good option mm -hmm. here's another one you know yeah. and then little things like the little not not telling someone no yeah. you're wrong or that's dumb or that's stupid 
as many times have I heard stupid ideas in that class. <laughs> but you guys, you allow people, you create the buy-in. You allow people to feel comfortable, yeah. and then you, you you get people to open up and go, hmm, mm-hmm. maybe I can take something from this, which is the biggest thing because we're going to be teaching a f- variety of personalities mm-hmm. and cultures and, you know, from, from the 40, 50-year-old who's in this class who doesn't want to be there to the 22-year-old who signed up because this is all he wants to do. You're uh-huh. teaching that oh, huge yeah. – Variety, yeah, like variety. I keep saying variety. Yeah, yeah. And you guys yeah. handled that very well. Thank you. Um, yeah. One thing I do want to get into is that shirt. Tell Got us it. about yeah. Safe Wrap. Dude, I, that just popped up on my Instagram, and it's like you would think I was searching it up because it's <laughs> everywhere now. What is Safe Wrap? <laughs> Give us a little a little background on what, what the Safe Wrap system is. Yeah, so Safe Wrap is a system of a uh, two person uh, control procedure and lateral restraint system. So. What happened was it actually came from the medical field, right? Nurses were having a, it's a huge issue. Close to 60 or 70% of nurses get attacked in the line of duty. And nobody hears about it because of uh, confidentiality from the hospitals, right? You're not allowed to talk about patients. So, and very often you can't have cameras in the hospital, right? Because that's also a confidentiality issue. So it's something that happens very frequently and is not seen. So they came to us and they're like, look, what, like, what can we do here? Because the problem with our patients is what is their, their, is their uh, Hippocratic Oath, I think it's called, which is first do no harm, right? So that's, the, that's their highest and most important thing is first do no harm. To the extent that the nurses will accept getting beat up and just take it because they don't want to hurt their patient. That's how crazy that line is, right? So if cops have that thing of like, you know, law enforcement has a thing of like, you know, we can, we can at least match in intensity or match in use of force. They are like, no, we cannot go uh, past this. So how can we restrain people without hurting them, without putting pressure on the diaphragm, without putting any weight potentially on their chest, right? Um, and still having the effectiveness of keeping the, potentially keeping that person on their back with all the benefits of putting the person belly down, which is then where we created this lateral restrain system, which is freaking amazing. So it is a tandem application, start standing. It's an entire system from... Start to finish, finish being potentially in handcuffs or in a four-point restraint. And we flew to Cali. We made it happen. Henry Hidon developed it. I, I was there to film and help. And yeah, I saw that video. Further potentially <laughs> finesse it. And it just became this amazing thing to the point where we're like, look, we, so me and Hidon, we can't get out of this thing. If we hold each other, we can't get out. So like, okay, this is good enough that we can get out. And if we can't get out, that's a good sign. So like, let's see who can get out. So what do we do? We go to Santa Monica, we set up a, we set up a sand, little mat, Venice Beach, you know, all the, you know, all the, the stuff men. people, all the love. And then we're like, hey, $1,000 if you can escape. And then $20 for participating. So, so That's, people I did see that were video trying too. very hard. People want $1,000 pretty bad. And can I do that challenge? Huh? I want a thousand dollars. I want to try. Everybody <laughs> wanted a thousand dollars, but you know what happened? Nobody got it. Bro. I'm an eye put. But, boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but you see, but that's what's funny, right? They try. They try to bite us. They try to poke us. They try to kick us. Nobody could. It's crazy. It's amazing. It's a mix of this, uh, this technique called a crossover arm control, or get, some people call it gift wrap. Some people call it um, twisting arm control, right? So it's a crossover arm control with a crossover leg control. And the new piece there is the, the, the leg placement and the way that's being held and the ability of the, of the people to communicate, right? So while the thing is happening, which is unparalleled with anything else. And then the lateral restraint portion, which has all the benefits of, of supine, which is control and potentially getting the person more tired, right? With what do we like about supine in the first place, right? One, it's easier to hold them down. They're farther from getting up to their feet. They have to turn belly down if they want to get up, right? So we like keeping them supine if we can for that reason. What's the downside of that? They can hit us. They have access to our weapon. Their hands are in front of them so they can push and poke and do all those things, right? What are the benefits of prone, right? And then the downside is you can't arrest them from supine, right? What is the benefit of prone, right? You can arrest them, but what's the, and they cannot touch your firearm, nor can they hit you. You see that effectively. But what's the problem? They built the house. We've seen it. Early pronation, people push. They turn to their, they go on all fours. They get up and they're gone. So we're like, man, what if there's a way? To have all the benefits of one with 
without any of the downsides of the other and just merge them together. So we came up with this lateral retraining system where they can't get up because it's, it's impossible. It's all I'm telling you, it's impossible. We we tried, and then uh, as far as you can tell, it's impossible, right? Until somebody proves us wrong, like it is insanely effective. Like just bizarre how good it is. They can't hit us because they're sideways, we're technically kind of behind them. And then we invented then the way to cuff them from there. So we can extract hands. They can't touch our face because we're be kind of behind them, right? Because they're on their side and we're over on this side. So it's just crazy, bro. It's so good. So good. And is that something that's going to be a, a class of its own? Or is that something that's going to be eventually integrated into the GST curriculum? Part of GST level two already. So if you go to GST level two, you will get introduced to safe rap. Okay. And, you know, it wouldn't be the Relentless Project if we didn't talk about everything, right? Like, have you of seen course, have you seen all the the negative feedback online? Absolutely, um, we have, I, yeah. And I, I give credit to Hannah and them because the grace they give people, I, uh -huh. they're better than me. <laughs> like, they, they are yeah, better than no, me. Yeah, no, of course, yeah. yeah. If people I came up hate, with right? something, time, yeah. if I came up That's with something, that was my baby, right? And someone's trying to, like, discredit it or give me shit for like i take it personally yeah and, and he just responds with with the facts that he knows you know like nope this is what yeah. it is this is you know this is how we're approaching it so there was mm -hmm. this there was this and i call it a rumor because i don't know of course, yeah. where people may get sued if they use this system without going through the class got it so no if individual users absolutely not we're not pursuing individual users right so we have zero intention around that area. Individual user, you and your boy, you guys want to learn, watch the video online, figure it out. You see what I'm saying? Send me the video when you pull it off, you know, for all that I care. <laughs> we don't, you know, it would just be dope, you know? I like, care, yeah, it would just be, you know? Like, just that's it? it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, right? Now, institutions teaching it as a whole, then it would be things like, you know, potentially, why do we patent safe rap? There's a, there's a very clear reason. It's because we want to we want to ensure quality control. That's the only reason why we did that. If and the only way that we can do that is by us being it, being the the relayers of the information, and then oh, the end user, as a part of the license, then has access to the videos. We can make sure that we they're getting requalified, and we can make sure that they're getting all the benefits of the system. The last thing we want is for it to get watered down, and then it starts losing its effectiveness, and then it loses the entire power of it to begin with. That's interesting. I did not think of it that way. Um, when I first saw this, I didn't look much into it. I looked at it and then yeah. I saw one comment that was like, and this is, this is the power of social media, right? Like so yeah, you, course, you, yeah. you see one huh? thing, you don't look into it and it's all, oh, well, it's crazy how they're going to sue people for using a technique that multiple yeah. techniques that's been around. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of fucked up. Like, let me look in. So I started looking into it. I saw the NYPD video. I saw you getting folded like a, like a lawn chair. Like I'm like, yeah. okay. And then I started looking into this. I'm like, oh, okay, like, is this, and, and I like to see both sides of the coin. Right. So for me, I was like, I was like, is this more of if I hijack a GST online program and I take it as my own, yes. like GST huh. isn't like backing me. That's something I did on my own. I may yeah. have taught it in a way that's not mm -hmm. how they would teach it. It's not appropriate. Yeah. So yeah. that can be a liability. And if there's no, there's no check, there's no, Hey, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Or a consequence of me doing that, yeah. then the GST program gets watered down because then I teach one person and then they teach it how I teach it. And then that person teaches it how that person teaches it. We start to see this deterioration of the curriculum. Yep. Yeah. So that makes sense of a quality control thing. You guys are create like you guys created a system in the sense of it starts from standing, right? Yep. Yep. You control it's a complete them, system. Yeah. We we ground. will do also individual safe wrap classes. So there is a class. If you just want to do the safe wrap, you can do just safe wrap. And to be honest, if you're a department and you only have four hours to teach or eight hours to teach a year, you should be doing safe wrap. And have you, is this something you guys have started already implementing in departments oh, yeah. and, and hospitals and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. What yeah, other, so, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Yo, yeah, yeah, UC Irvine, they already took a seminar for, for safe rap. They're going to be jumping in. Uh, there's been some talks with some, you know, I mean, we already have NYPD, right? They're doing an entire, they, their entire cadre, 32,000 officers are doing safe rap and they've got, they, they, they purchased a license to teach. And then we're going to be doing that for the, the entire time. Every single end user will have access to videos. 
and every single end user is going to get tested and verified and make sure that they are doing it correctly, right? So that's what we have to protect ourselves, right? Otherwise, anybody just goes, watches the video, tries to copy it. Now they're like, oh, we teach safe rap here too. And then now what are we doing, right? You lose the power of the brand, right? Because you lose the effectiveness. The whole point is to be as effective as possible. So yeah, we have some very, very big players coming into the game and, and we're offering like, you know, a lot of the agencies, if you jump in, like you can, you, you will give you the, the, the program. If you put in a queue, we'll work with you based on size of the agency and whatnot. It's very, very, very workable. So people are tripping, bro. Well, I'm glad you were able to clear that up because that's something yeah. I, I, I was like, how, like, how, how does, like, how does this get implemented? You know, how mm -hmm. does, but it makes sense. It's a, it's a quality control thing. Yep. Um, yeah, because you, you know, but, and, and with anything you do, you know, you have, you have people who applaud the GST program and then you have mm -hmm. a group of people like this is useless and dumb and, and it's just, but with any, any training, any school, you know, you have like stout, that's the, that's the school I belong to here. Uh -huh. One of the bigger gyms, one of the, you know, we have four schools here, hundreds of members fight team. It's a big school. You yeah. will find someone who goes, that school's trash. Like it's with anything. You do. It's Bro, with anything. It's you do. Mm -hmm. it, where, it's where so you... funny that you mentioned that because you, I don't know if you remember, it, even on the GSTs, we have this talk, right? We're like, welcome. You're, if you, if you raise your hand, you're team jujitsu. Bro, you're doing the right thing. What are we talking about, bro? If there's another course that teaches jujitsu, great. Teach jujitsu. See what I'm saying? If you're teaching control and arrest procedures and you are effective and you are demonstrating techniques that will help officers and that will potentially, you know, be like life saving. Why would we hate on it? Doesn't make any sense, right? Like, I just don't, that to me doesn't make any sense. I'll rather, you know, like, we have all the certified training centers. Evidently, I, I'll prefer that you go train in one of those. But you're telling me that you training, let's say where you're trained, there's no certified training centers under the Gracie family, right? If you're doing, you're training with Hanzo. Like, you're having amazing training, right? Now, put it on the back of your mind that he has to follow those three prongs in order for it to be applicable to your job, right? So, including on certified training centers, we will teach techniques that are like, look, this is not street applicable. This is for when you're rolling with your friends. This is a game that we love to play with that, which is that grappling game, right? Know what's for the street, know what's for jujitsu, and also know what's for law enforcement, right? Which would be, do you have a degree of weapon retention? Do you, are you managing distance? And is it a national body movement? And you can have that filter on your own, right? You're intelligent enough. A any person can come up with that, right? You see an X guard, you're like, can I get hit from here? Can I, like, you know, is it a natural body movement? Potentially, right? And do I have a degree of weapon retention? Maybe. If you're good enough, if you're Marcelo Garcia, you probably can pull it off, right? If you're half of the guys in your wave, you can probably pull it off. I can pull it off. On a street fight, I can probably pull it off an extra. But am I going to? I don't know if I'm going to, right? I'll rather do other things. No, so, that's. I, I like that you mentioned that because there's, especially in, in law enforcement, dude, we're, we're the most stubborn group of people, I feel like. You have that, you know, you have the guys who do no jujitsu, but they teach and uh, defensive mm -hmm. tactics, and they're like, that wouldn't work on the that wouldn't work on the street. And then you have jujitsu guys who've never done anything other than sport jujitsu, and they're like, yeah, I can destroy you in a street fight. And it's yeah. like, so, you don't maybe. know that. Then you have a guy yeah. who who does both, who's mm -hmm. who's managed both, who can turn the yeah. switch on from sport to street. And mm -hmm. I had a I had this conversation with one of my coaches, and uh, the dude was like, oh, I'll just I'll just bite you, and he's like. I'll bite you back. Like I'm not going to follow <laughs> sport jujitsu if I'm doing jujitsu in the street or I'm just going to rip your jaw off. Yeah. I'm like, people forget that it's, it's always what this way or this way. And people forget that like there's a middle ground. Yeah. No, yeah. Like, right. Like it, it, are you taking into consideration biting when you're doing your jujitsu? You should. Yeah. Like if you're going to ADCCs, which we'll segue in here in a second, you're, yeah. you're not going to be worried about someone biting you. Nope. But yeah. if you're at a bar, Probably should. Those are considerations. And as you're yeah, training, right. you should be thinking about these things because you want to, you want to start training your mind for, to look mm -hmm. for things, you know, punches. I'm a big elbow guy, you know, when, when, yeah, when I'm doing well, MMA I'm training, yeah. I'll, I'll tap my partner, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'm like so boom, well. Hey, that's here. Yeah. And he's like, Oh shit. Just, yeah. And then, then you yeah. see their hands come up and everything. And it's like, yeah. we get into this mode, yeah. but if you, yeah. you're training both and you're applying both, you create mm -hmm. this, this new system yourself. You know me, I'm 230 pounds. Yep. I am not going to be doing inverted in nope. jiu-jitsu. Yeah. That's not me. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm not doing mm-hmm. side aerials to get over people. That's not me. Uh-huh. I'm more yeah. of a bully, heavy, pressure, sticky yeah. pressure. Like that's yeah. my game that I've started Roll, to develop. Control, tight passing. Yeah. yeah. Like, but that's something that you, especially as cops, we have to improvise, adapt and overcome. That's something that yeah. be, before you learn how to fight, before you learn how to do anything, you should have the ability to improvise, adapt and overcome because with that ability, you can learn how to defend yourself, defend you know, the civilians keep suspects safe, keep people that you're dealing with safe. But with anything less extreme than that, you go to a house and someone starts yelling at you. If you can't mm-hmm. improvise, adapt and overcome, you're going to yell back. That yeah, solves sure. nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, no, I appreciate you for talking about that because I think if, if, if someone or a school or a person, you're doing something with good intention to benefit mm-hmm especially law enforcement, man, we're, we're on the news all the time. And, and mm-hmm. what I try to tell people is like these people, the majority of these incidents, these violent encounters, these escalated use of forces, they're from people who do not train at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they go to the I range guess. and they shoot and they call themselves experts in the field. And, and it's, it's sad because they don't train so that they're more likely to use force. They're more likely to escalate force because they're scared. And a For lot sure. of these calls or these incidents may be justified in the eyes of the law. But when you mm-hmm. see it or I see it or someone who trains and takes yeah. this very serious, we're like, man, that could have been, a, that could have been avoided. Mm-hmm. Which is why the fourth thing is so important on the GSTs, right? Which has to be, uh, is it, uh, is it going to keep the officer safe? That's number one, right? Bro, you got to go home. That's the most important thing, right? Then are you going to keep the civilian safe, right? Or the person they're arresting? We forget often who gave cops the authority to, to arrest you. People. It was the it was civilians, it was the yeah. people. The people gave you that that authority, right? So I think we owe them a degree of you know of grace when they misbehave. Now, you know, can't be doing crazy things, right? Because then that's why we have escalation of force and an appropriate amounts of force for the appropriate behavior, right? Or inappropriate behavior, depending on how they're they're going. Then you have the the uh, the third problem, which is are you following the departmental policy, right? You might have kept yourself safe, but you're not following the departmental policy. You're going to jail. Yeah, that's or losing good, your job. Right? You're losing your job, right? You're losing your 401k, like, right? So that's no good. And then the last piece is, are you re- is that technique going to reconcile or create further separation from with the civilians? And that's an important question that we ask, right? And if it doesn't follow those four things, it's not a GST technique. Man, that's interesting. Because he has to follow that. Otherwise, what are we doing? Create a further separation. Those guys, they, they, they might actually be an expert, right? And because they don't have the answer, can you even blame them? They did the best they could with the tools they had, right? But starting with that kind of little bit of that premise, I'll give them a, a like a, ah, I'll give them a little grace. And at the I same give them, time, I give them a little I'll grace. I'll give them a little love, right? Like if you don't a know what bit. to do, punching the person in the face is a great idea. If you don't know what to do, push it, trying to push the person off is a great idea. But guess what? If you know what to do, you know exactly. They're like, oh my God, that's insane. That's a ridiculous idea, right? So, and is it even justifiable at times punching people in the face? Of course. Right? Yeah, of course, now, sometimes. Right? Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So, and nobody will have a problem. Somebody pulls a knife, you clip him, and then they go down, right? And you take the knife off. Nobody will have a problem with that. Just about every civilian I know with, like, you know, two brain cells would be like, yeah, that's reasonable, right? Now, the person pops up on you and you shoot him, that's excessive force. That's unnecessary, right? So, it, it has to follow that line, right? Like, where, like, okay, like, what are, what are we what are we doing here? So, those people, and again, the only reason I give them grace is because they don't know the answer, Right? It's not necessarily that they're, they're, they're ignorant to what could be, right? So it's, it's hard to judge people on their, their, their ignorance, right? Especially given the lack of exposure. Now, is there an unwillingness to... <laughs> I was going to say lack of exposure to what? Because exactly. Well, lack of exposure ju- to training, right? Yeah, ju- and that, where is that, is taken from? Over. that could be an internal thing. So, uh, but yeah, so the, then the main problem is that where does it fall under, right? Where you're saying that might have been acceptable under the lines of the law but it's unacceptable under the eyes of the civilians, the very people that gave them the power, right? Which is why that kind of stuff doesn't make it to the technique. It doesn't make it into the course because you can't, right? The whole point is to try to bridge that gap. Yeah. Because that would no. be the most beneficial for police. In Absolutely. My yeah. If you if you handle the situation and society backs you, mm-hmm. win-win, right? So if I'm you home, handle yeah. the situation and society hates you, is, is that a win? <sighs> you know, if you yeah. don't handle the situation... And society loves you. Is that a win? Uh, that's no. not a win either. Yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. 
Exactly. I, I agree. I agree. It's not a win either, right? Yeah. So it's a fine line, and 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 I give a little grace, but then I also, I, I I'm also a little stern because this is a profession mm-hmm. where like nothing against nine to fives or anything like that, but like this isn't That's an cool. office job where you show up, you sit down, no. you turn on your TV or your monitor, and then you just start working. This is something mm-hmm. you have to prepare for. And mm-hmm. if your department, for example, a lot of a lot of guys go to the gym and girls, they'll they'll train, they'll yeah. go to the gym, they'll lift weights, some even run. And they're yeah. like, well, this is, I have to be in shape to, be, to do this job. Right. It's like, you, you know, yeah. you're starting. That's good. Well, you also yeah. have to know how to defend yourself, control people, mm-hmm. talk to people, write reports. Like these are a lot, it's a multifaceted industry oh, yeah. that a lot of departments aren't going to pay you for. And there's this mantra of, well, if I'm not getting paid to do it, I ain't going to do it. And it's like, yeah. do you care to go home at night? Mm-hmm. Can you yeah, live with knowing you, you took someone's life, some loved one, some loved one's life because mm-hmm. you just, you didn't get paid to train. And that's what I tell people. I'm like, if you go to work tomorrow, something happens, God willing, it doesn't, but something happens mm-hmm. and you are forced to take someone's life. Maybe it's justifiable by the law. Mm-hmm. And then you get interviewed, you get, you know, interrogated and all this. And they're like, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do this? Why don't you do this? And then five years down the road, you're thinking like, man, if I would have just trained a little, that could have been avoided. Like, will you be comfortable mm-hmm. with that? Yeah. And you get some people like, yeah, it was, yeah, it was justified. Yeah. yeah. But like, is your soul at peace with that decision? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's what you find. That you, you weigh your options that way. Right. So I believe, for example, like, right. I have some things that kind of, that they're, they're a little weird, but they're just interesting in general. Right. For example, discipline. Right. I don't believe that there's discipline all that much. I just believe that you weigh your options in, in, in a different way. You train because you're like, I could not live with myself. If that were to happen to me, so you create a you create a hypothetical so strong that it barely takes any discipline to train. Even though it was some days it might take discipline to train, but when you weigh it against that, it's very hard not to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that often people don't weigh it against so, something that's strong enough, right? So uh, with lifting, right? A lot of people are like, "Oh, you should I do I, Do you lift for jujitsu? Do you lift for this? Do you lift for that?" To be honest, I live for a handful of reasons. One of them is vanity. I like looking good when I'm, I have my clothes off. And that's perfectly <laughs> fine. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. You know? I you are no a looker. That, right? You because are a looker. Struggle, right? So, and that's okay. The second thing is I like structural integrity. Right? Like, man, I feel like I just generally, I just, I just feel better. It feels good. So, if it feels good, I'm going to do more of it, which is okay. Right? And then you have, um, the other thing is that I weigh lifting against my survival so if my jujitsu fails my strength might save me see i go i go the opposite usually my strength fails and i hope my jujitsu saves me <laughs> there you go. right so now what's the likelihood of my jujitsu failing me extremely unlikely right but who knows bro can you imagine if i go with somebody that's that imagine somebody that has more skill than i do but they are smaller and have less endurance i might beat them yeah, because you it's have and possible. I, you see that? So what saved me there? What I one of my biggest pet peeves is like, oh, that's just because you're strong. Sure. It's like, sure. and you're and you're flexible, and yeah. you're mobile. Yeah. Like what? Why is my strength? Yeah. Less than your strength of mobility and flexibility. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like no, yeah, I the, agree. Especially if it's life or death. What are we talking about, bro? Yeah, who like, cares? Yeah, who cares what got me here? I'm here. Who cares? Yeah. Like, dude, you're telling me, like, you're telling me that if if I were to bet, right? If I had a, you know, like, I, I'm going to put a thousand bucks on something, right? And somebody has to do a weapon retention, right? And they grab that gun. Who would you vote? The person that has the stronger grip or the weaker grip to keep that thing? Stronger grip, obviously. Stronger grip all day long. Like, what are we talking about? Same technique, weaker grip, stronger grip, all likelihood, weaker, stronger grip. We'll work against more people more often. Then why not have a stronger grip? Especially if it's something that's developable, right? So what are we talking about? That's a ridiculous idea, right? Bro, your life depends on it. Be as strong, as fit, stack as many things as you can in your favor. That's it. I want to make that fight as asymmetrical as possible, right? Yeah, at the end of the day, that's the goal, right? To, to yeah, be ahead. Yeah, nobody wants to be weaker. Like, what are we talking about, you know? I want to be more mobile. <laughs> sure then yeah but but you can work on that too exactly nobody's stopping you from working on that right like go ahead go go to the freaking i don't know stretch lab you know 
Make it happen. <laughs> bro, that, yeah, let's talk about yoga. it, bro. Yeah. That is a hustle, man. <laughs> yeah, it is. Dude, it's like $300 for someone to stretch you. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I yeah, can bro. go sign up for PT for no reason yeah. and get the same treatment for less. Yeah. Probably well, covered by YouTube. my insurance. Yeah. <laughs> there's a good chance there's a YouTube video out there that you can get a 30-minute stretch routine. But I guarantee you that for free, people won't do it. Bro, I, I literally looked it up because I was like, oh, you know, I want to open my shoulders up a little bit. You know, what, what could it uh-huh. be? 20, 20 bucks a month? Bro, it, the quote came back 300 something dollars. I, I, yep. I replied back. All I replied back was, are you serious? Yeah. That, that was it. Yeah. Dude, they never yeah. replied back. They was like, yeah, this dude's yeah. not going to be here. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Are you going yeah, to ADCC? Yeah, like, you know, sometimes that's not your customer, you know? It's just what it is, yeah. I'm okay. sure there's a bunch of people paying. Otherwise, they wouldn't be all over. They're all over the place. They they are popping up. I will say that. Yeah, they're popping up. Yeah. You uh, are you comp- No, what what you you said you got an injury. What what happened? If you don't mind me asking. No, I had three. Uh, I had three hernias that needed to get fixed. So, and I was getting worried because one of the inguino hernias that was getting very large, and I was like, oh man, if I get a knee cut pass and that thing explodes, good good luck, you know. So. Oh damn. Yeah. So, yeah. so I was like, have you been training? I'm gonna go under, bro. Huh? Have you been training? No, three weeks off. The longest break I ever took in my life. Bro, I've been off since May 17th. Oh, yeah? What happened? Yeah. I tore my meniscus. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Oh, those are no fun. Yeah. I mean, well, people so are like, it a, that's... Is it, is it a full tear or is it a partial tear? So it was, a la- it was the lateral meniscus and it uh-huh. split in half, but it was still, like, I guess, attached. Yeah, and got it. so it's a little. Uh, I forgot what they call flap. Yeah, it's a flap. Tip. It's a yeah. call a bucket flap. Yeah, bucket or flap. Bucket flap. Yeah. Bucket flap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but like my knee was like a softball, dude, and it happened oh, at gosh. it happened at a training class, um, mm-hmm. out in Jersey. I was doing. I was I was pulling a Bernardo and traveling to train. You know, it feels amazing. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, and you know, it was a five day class. I'm on the fourth day, and we're rolling every lunch break. We're rolling. I'm like, dude, and like jujitsu. I was like going once a week two times a week yeah. like i fall i fell uh-huh. off jiu-jitsu a little bit and no, this no. class i'm like i'm about to fucking go back and i'm gonna fuck everybody up in the gym i hope they don't hear this because they will all trash me but um i'm <laughs> no, sitting there like i'm about to bring fire to the gym friday <laughs> comes bro so you know it's it's a three-on-one drill i uh i don't act appropriately dude spears me from the side my knee goes my foot stays all the beautiful stuff Ugh. and i can't walk bro and then yeah. I'm with my home. My homie calls me because he lives in Jersey. He's like, "Yo, we're going out Manhattan tonight. Like, I'm gonna come pick you up." I'm like, "Man, tequila right. and ibuprofen. I'll be good." Yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, I tequila it up, and I'm walking on. I'm like, "Oh, it's just a sprain, bro." The next morning, it was like, um, and I had to drive back. So I'm like oh, holding my no. leg. I'm holding my leg. I can't piss because I can't walk from the car to the gas station. <laughs> like to fill my car, I'm like crawling out using my arms coming yeah, back yeah. dude it was miserable but um oh no yeah, i haven't trained cool. since then you know because uh-huh. like I'm, right now i got surgery now i'm in the rehab stage and trying to get it strong yeah, okay, and stuff yeah. again and everyone yeah. i talk to like oh if you're gonna tear one the meniscus is the way to go i'm like oh well fucking thanks yeah <laughs> no, no no that's actually like out, out of all the things it's not the worst yet no Did they yeah, cut it out or they reattach it so they couldn't heal it but they i guess it healed more than they anticipated so they only took 20 percent Oh, gotcha. Which, they cut it out then. Yeah. yeah, so eighty percent on a test, that's that's a B. That's yeah. good for me. You know, I'm like Perfect. Okay. Yeah, no, no, you're gonna be good, bro. Yeah. So So meniscus is very interesting. Unless it's catching, like I have both my medial meniscus are torn. So uh and they've been torn for fourteen years now. Yeah. So Oh, right, I'll just go fuck myself. How about that? So <laughs> so actually no no no, and I'll tell you why, with uh, with relatively low issues. One is I still have a good cushion on the joint. And the second piece is it's not catching, right? So as long as I have no pain, the presentation of pain went away. So, which is very interesting. Yeah, Occasions mine was like me, locking. Were... It was like locking at a certain point. Yeah, no, if it's it locking, a... you have to get surgery. There's no way around it. Yeah. So, yeah. So I've been out, but I'm going to go to ADC. Actually, what's your opinion? Are you an ADCC guy, right? Obviously, you've competed yeah. in it. Um, yeah. What's your opinion, uh, uh, opinion, opinion on CJI Invitational? Uh I, I mean, I, I, it's, <laughs> <laughs> we want to roll up the internet, bro. Right? Let's start with the fact that it's hilarious, right? It's very funny. Uh, the whole thing, uh, the way they're advertising is, I, I, I mean, it's brilliant, right? So uh, now the downside, I wish it wasn't on the same weekend, on the same weekend as ADCC because I want to see those fights, right? Half the fights got a little split up there, 
And the people that you want to see on one side against the people on the other side would have been amazing, right? And, and yet, I like the idea of paying people a ton of money, bro. I think that's fair. And if the money is there, then who am I to say, you know, like anything for or against it, right? So I truly but, hope that this first one was just a petty move mm -hmm. to, to make Me ADCC too. aware. Me because too. I would love yeah. to see CGI you in, in, in the beginning of the year, ADCC in the end of the year, like something where they yeah. can both coincide and athletes can get paid, yeah. jiu-jitsu skyrockets. Yeah. But I had bought ADCC tickets for Vegas. I'm going yeah. on the 15th. Uh -huh. And then everyone I'll fucking leaves. Too, You're going? Hells yeah. Dude, so, okay, I'm going with my homie. And yeah. we ended up getting CJI tickets. Really? So, yeah. Oh, we we yeah. got CJI tickets with a Sunday pass for ADCC. Yeah. So, oh, Angie, so you guys got a one-day ticket for ADCC. Yeah, we ended up selling selling the other ones to get the one-day pass for Sunday. How got long it. are you going to be in Vegas for? I'm going to get there Friday. I teach a GST in Denver next week. And the yeah, the next week, Monday through Friday, then I fly on Friday. Um and then I'm there until Sunday because then I go to uh Cali to teach again and then uh another GST in uh Vacaville, I think it's called, or Vacaville, I don't know how to say that city. And then I go to San Diego for a little bit just to kick back with family. So Bro, I'm gonna hit but, you yeah. up after this because uh we gotta link yeah. up in Vegas, bro. Bro, Vegas. We gotta I link got, up in Vegas. I know you was about to I be there. The, I got the I got the connections in Vegas, bro. That's but, for sure. Let's, but uh, the guys at Roca, they hook it up with uh, with backstage passes. So I can't, bro. You can't say no to that, bro. That's gonna be too cool. We'll so talk. backstage passes for ADCC, and with all the love, I'm gonna have my phone on CJI. Right? CJI is gonna be is gonna be free on YouTube. Yeah, so I'm um, gonna be watching it, and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna be, you know, dual screening. <laughs> I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if my homie sold the got the ticket sold because if he didn't, we'll just we'll go to one, go to one, go to one, go to one. Yeah, for sure. I don't know how yeah, far they fun, are from yeah. each other, but uh, yeah, yeah. we're staying. We're it can't staying be that pretty far, close. Though. Vegas not that big, you know. So, uh, dude, jujitsu in the dome. That would be dude, that's sick. Be, oh my god, that would be that would be amazing. That would be pretty cool. That watch, would yeah. be sick. And this is what they need to do. I don't know if they do this. You have an event in the dome. And you record it, and then you play the it, and you uh -huh. play it on the outside of the dome. Yeah, that'll be freaking Dude, that gangster. Would be, that'll be amazing. They're gonna steal that idea. I want. I want. I want copyright. You want? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. Uh, so you're gonna be there Friday. When do you leave? Yes. I leave Sunday. Yeah. Uh, we got we got a weekend of shenanigans to do then. For sure. Yeah. Do we got to link up? Um. What else did we have to talk about? We had a we had a laundry list of things. So yeah, so I'll tell you on the the recovery side, right? So it's very interesting because it's one has been the longest break I've ever taken, and two is like, man, what do you do when you're not doing this? You know? Can you lift? That's a good question. You know? Huh? Can you lift with with no. recovery? No, it's so, a hernia. You you rip the hernia. Yeah. So yeah, you how have you been stitches. dealing with that? Someone who trains all the time and are, and is always moving and traveling, like how are you dealing with having to slow down? Because I'm one of those dudes, like I, I can't slow down, and not being in jujitsu has been very hard for me. So I've yeah. like, I've went the extreme with lifting. Like I, I've been lifting for two hours every morning. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. So like, how are you dealing with not being able to do anything in this moment? So I'm allowed to walk. Oh, that's great. So I just put the max incline. So I, I massage it with a doctor, right? I was like, hey, man, what can I do? He goes, you can walk. I was like, can I walk on an incline? He's like, yes. Can I run? He goes, no. I was like, but I can walk. He's like, yeah. So I put on the highest incline, and I just spent four hours there. Yeah. Oh, that's why you've been posting those videos. That makes sense. Dude, I'm like, I, I'm, I've watched those videos, and I get out of breath. Dude, so I'm doing this. Um, there's a fundraiser, uh, uh, Project Guardian, I believe is the name. And it's a 9-11 fundraiser. You effectively climb the World Trade Center, what would be the equivalent of the World Trade Center on a Stairmasters. Okay. And whoever is the fastest wins. So I've been out, this last week I've been able to, I can do Stairmasters, I can do this arm thing, but I can't lift. So I've been doing the Stairmasters. So I'll do, um, I've been doing three 30 minute uh, sessions at, at the 12 or 13 level, whatever it is, right? So I'm basically climbing the World Trade Center three times every day for the past week. So I've actually done a similar challenge. It was like um, on 9 11, uh -huh. where you're supposed to wear a weighted, a weighted, a weighted vest and then mm -hmm. climb the amount of steps. Yep. Um, firemen do it in their entire fire kit, which is with gas, with the mask and everything, bro. Crazy. Blows my mind. Um, yep. Yep. I'm close to like 
peeling over, just doing it in plain clothes <laughs> with a vest. So yeah, oh, um, yeah. that's off to those men and women who do that. But um, I agree. yeah, so you're doing this every like every day. Is this every week? Every day, bro. Every day, I just go to the gym. I do it, and then I I hit a I have a red light therapy thing that I can access. So just go in there for 20, 30 minutes, which is why I'm healing super well too. And then um, and then sauna. I'm allowed to do sauna as well. So I hit the sauna for 20, 25 minutes. I do a little bit of cold, and then I go sauna, cold, and then I go home. I did that one time. I went to a spa treatment. You know, I got to get mm-hmm. my massage on, you know, because. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they're like, do you want to do the, the hot cold therapy? And yeah. I'm like, yeah, sure. Bro, that was, they, they put you in, in this like. Not a smoke room, but cryotherapy chamber. It's a it's the hot. What do you call the, the where the hot mist comes out? I speak oh, two languages. Yeah, right. So it's a wet sauna then. Yeah. So it's like, dude, you can't see. I can't breathe. Yeah, yeah. It's so heavy. And then you yeah. go into a cold shower outside. Boom. And then you yeah. go back. Then cold shower. And then you go into a pool. Get out. You go into a hot tub. And then you go into a, uh like an ice bath. Yeah, and they're like, "Hey, we're only gonna do ten seconds because people lock up." Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, oh, "Oh, like, what do you what do you mean people lock up? Like, because because it's so extreme the temperature." Yeah. Uh huh. Bro, I got in there, and like, I couldn't feel my body. Yeah. Oh yeah. I could not feel my body. It, I have a rule: did, I don't leave until I calm down. I felt the yeah. I felt like I was able to like hyper like get my breath in control and stuff, and I stayed for fifteen seconds because I'm the motherfucking man. But um, yeah. dude, I felt great after. Bro, one, you gotta do one, it. You can do it. You can, you can hit three minutes. You'd be surprised. Well, so th- I, I want to start. Do you cold plunge? So, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I finally found a place here that does it. And then, um, bro, Jiu Jitsu is crazy for the connections, right? You have an accountant, you have a lawyer, you have you have freaking everybody, right? Yeah, everyone does. So, it. guy has a freaking has a studio here, cold plunge. Uh, shout out to Henry because he, he has one in his house. And then uh, he was the one that, bro, in the morning, he goes, What's up, bro? You ready? And I was like, ready for a while? He's like, we're doing cold. So we just go in, bro. Early in the morning is like brutal. The thing is 40 degrees. So we go in there, five minutes, and then we do 100 squats, 100 push-ups, and some lunges. Bro, so, y'all raw dog in life with that. <laughs> but let me tell you, there's nothing after that that will push your buttons. People I talk it. smack, you're like, bro, like, that's, you know what's hard? That cold. This is nothing, right? It's just... It's just noise, man. <laughs> Not to put myself on blast, but I accidentally moved the shower head to the cold setting, and I'm like, oh, you know, like, yeah. to, submerge, <laughs> to submerge yourself for three minutes, bro, that's wild. Like, yeah, yeah. why do you guys hate life so much? What's going on? You want to talk about it? No, bro, you feel great after. That's what's crazy. The next three hours, you're like a, you're like a, I don't know, a mon- like a, I don't know, bro. It's like a mongoose on PCP. Like, you're freaking ready to To your brain, bro. Like, yeah. When I got oh, all that cold, like, my brain, like, I was firing on all cylinders. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was yeah. I was hearing colors and seeing sounds, man. Like it's, yeah, bro, you were ready. Yeah, plus um, inflammation, bro. As much because we were doing this, I was staying at his house while we were filming Safe Rap. So I spent like twelve days there, and then uh, and bro, you're filming for 16, 17 hours a day. So yeah, what are you filming? Filming the entire up? course. The entire course is oh filmed, the right? course. Okay. Yeah. So, bro, we're doing like you know when you see those videos, we we do those in a week, two weeks. You know, now to edit everything takes forever, but to film everything, bro, it's we crank through it, right? And then, uh, and you were so. Oh, I bet. Yeah, that's that's jujitsu for all day, for two yeah. weeks straight. Oh yeah, with yeah. with Henner. <laughs> yeah, and Hero. And your Hero. Legs. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> uh, no thanks. I'll pass. And they're like the nicest dudes ever, and then they'll just murder you nicely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do you yeah, uh no do you use the the sleeper hold? Is it called the sleeper hold? Oh bro, all the time. Yeah. I do not travel without it. Absolutely do not travel without it. Yeah. You need to tell them guys I'll wear it on the podcast. If they send me one, I'll sponsor uh-huh. they can sponsor the podcast. Done. So I can have a sleeper hold for Vegas. <laughs> oh god. <gotcha. laughs> yeah. It's a long bro, flight. See, when is it? Yeah. Vegas next 15. week. I'll I leave, it. Yeah, I leave the fifteenth. Cool. I'll, I'll, I'll send one to you. I'll see if I can, if I can get it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, tell yeah. Can you leave it on the 15th? What day is today? Today's the 6th. This time. Yeah. No, I can get you one for sure. Yeah. I'll get you one. Bro, that would be, that would be, do- I will, I will put, I will post the logo on this video. Perfect. I got you, bro. Easy day. 
Ah, I'll tell you, dude, you know what's crazy? Like people are gonna be listening to this, and then they're gonna see the logo, and then they're gonna watch me fly to Vegas with it. It's like it's gonna be dope. It's gonna be perfect. Post a video when you when you put it on the airplane. Oh, I film will. it. Send it to Hannah. He will post it. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to. I'm gonna say, hey, courtesy of Bernardo. Boom, and Boom. then I'm just gonna, and I'm just gonna let it record the entire flight so he sees me sleeping. <laughs> 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 that would be funny. Yeah. He's gonna be watching. Like, what else happens? It's just gonna be like five hours wasted nope. of his time. Just, yeah. No. No. Be it saves my back, right? I fly so often that, and the problem is, I'm super tall. So none of the pillows, actually, like the neck pillows, they don't hold your neck, right? So they're supposed to brace the size of your head, but no neck pillow is this tall, right? Doesn't even make sense. So well, like I have pillow. no neck, and it still doesn't like it still doesn't do it, me. right? So. Bro, why not? Like, it's jujitsu, right? You hold the end of the lever. You don't hold the bottom of the lever, right? Can you imagine if you try to hold an arm bar by the shoulder? Be exhausted. You never hold it, right? Yeah. Like, it's going to go all over the place. It's Dude, the same that, thing. You hold I the never, wrist, right? Or you hold the hand. Yeah, right? It's right here, bro. It's I never thought lever. about that. Yeah. yeah. Do you use the hoodie? What What's it called, the hoodie? Oh, yeah. Bro, TSA. That's the ultimate hack on TSA. You can only bring one back, but if you have the hoodie, you have two. Dude, he... I would love to live in his head for like 10 minutes, just like 10 minutes. See what the hell he'd be thinking about. Bro, we have a, we developed a safe strap too. It's a way to keep people on the safe wrap after you cuff them. I ain't see nothing about that. Oh, don't worry, bro. It's coming soon. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> you heard so it here. Yeah. If you did another podcast talking about this, it's not allowed to release until this does. It is done. August 6th. This is August 6th. This was recorded on August 6th. I called dibs first. Perfect. So is that something? So is that going to be like a universal thing? Like, I don't know how much we're going to roll it out. So yeah, we're going to start selling it soon. But yeah, we're basically going to roll it out. It has a dual purpose. One is to keep people while they in cuffs with that crossover leg control. So basically the person's leg is crossed over so they can't turn to their stomach. And the funny thing is they can't turn to their back either. They end up staying kind of toppled on their side so they can breathe the whole time. So it's basically a, rec- it's a recumbent position, right? So even though it's commonly referred to as recovery position, that's like technically an incorrect term, but whatever. So they're in a recumbent side position where there's no, they can't positionally asphyxiate, right? So, which is amazing. What happened with hobbles historically has been they put them on their stomach, right? Yeah. And they're curled like this and they can't breathe. So now, you know, there's some debate there, but at the same time, like it's still, bro, it's super uncomfortable. Right. This thing oh, no, dude, I, I'm, a, I'm a bigger, I'm a bigger dude. If I just lay on my chest with my hands on my side, it's hard for, it's harder for me to breathe. I mean, yeah. that's, oh, that's yeah. been now imagine if you did a round of jujitsu, do two rounds and then lay like that. And then you yeah. cannot move. But, or even when Bro, someone's laying on fun. you in jujitsu, when someone's laying on you, we get a lot, what, what, what people call pressure tapping, right? Like someone's yep. laying on oh, you, yeah. they're smothering you. They're not yeah. hurting you. They're not choking you. They're not impeding anything you freak out because you can't breathe. Yeah. And then we have the anxiety and all that stuff that kicks in when people are fighting. Cause usually if we're putting hands on someone and we're in this realm that we're referring to, there's mm-hmm. fight. So now they're oh, exhausted yeah. and now we're laying them yeah. on their stomach. Yeah. It's, no, it, dude, it's that's, dangerous, bro. It's just, it's just what it is. Yeah. I mean, I'll say it's, da- I think it's dangerous, right? Will so, you be able to put them, side, it's perfect. Would you be able to put them in a, in a vehicle? With this, that's the thing. The, the the strap doubles as a vehicle insertion strategy because their legs are bound. I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have yeah, to take bro, this. it's pretty dope. It's very slick. Yeah. Hey, when bro, you we when, when, made it on his freaking living room, I think that's what the best I was ideas there with happen. Me and him, we we're thinking about it, and he's like, "Bro, how can we make the strap that goes like this? And it wraps, and it's, bro, it's easy. It's the size of a, a pack of gum." Because I know the real estate in your belt is very limited already, right? Yeah, especially if you got like smaller so, female officers. For sure, you, you gotta have like, a place for the... freaking yeah, dude. Okay, I I mean I wanted to see this roll out and kind of get a feel for it, but yeah, I'm gonna have it's very to. Very cool, yeah. And then now instead of taking two people to watch that one person, right, like the safe wrap, it only takes one person monitoring. Let's say this is more for like riot situation, right? You have a riot, you arrest a person, you need that officer back online, right? They can be just watching over that person while they're they're completely wrapped up it's very cool bro that is interesting when is that when do you guys think that'll that'll make mainstream we just got back got our prototypes back like the 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 final prototype back and then we're probably gonna start rolling it out soon so we're just gonna put it into production so yeah that's gonna be dope that's gonna be exciting 
there's nothing I love more than people doing shit like this, you know, pushing yeah. the envelope, pushing the needle. Um, those, mm -hmm. those are guys I respect. You're a guy I respect. Um, mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm excited. And, and I hope the negative stigma, people can look past the negative stigma of, of mm -hmm. yeah. this thing. Well, so much of it comes from fear, right? Like, it's fair, it's fear. Uh, yeah, it's like, right. So especially cause we, we, we patented the move, right? So nobody can copy it to it. Like, you know, to, to that, to that extent. And, uh, uh, and if prone restraint becomes obsolete to a degree and you don't have any other alternative, this becomes very interesting. You know what I'm saying? Which will likely happen right directionally. That's what we're seeing. So, so is, uh, how would you guys just talking to you here? Yeah, of course. How would you yeah. pivot? pivot the curriculum of that system because it's a, it's an entirety of a system. So is that, yeah. if, let's say bro, down the road that happens, you can teach safe rap in four hours, bro. It's crazy. You can teach safe rap in four hours. So, oh, yeah. so you guys are providing, once you sign up for this course, you go through it, you pass, yeah. you get the bells and whistles. It, are you guys presenting this four hour curriculum? Like you guys did with GST. It's like, in, here's a block. Level you guys two. Can yeah. teach. It's, it's a part of level two now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, is it going to be a part of the online stuff? Cause I'm actually sending two instructors to that. Oh yeah. Like right now. Yep. As soon as we're done editing everything, it will be online and everybody that signed up up to now is already going to receive once it gets updated. Fuck. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, bro. It's going to be sick. Just watch it, bro. Cause it's sweet. So how does that work for an agency, like a bigger agency? who mm -hmm. are, are trying to learn a multitude of, of fields or, or practices. Let's say they have five GST guys, five this guys, five this guys, no. five this guys. How does GST approach that in the sense of covering, covering the instructors, the department, and the officers? Yeah, so it's going, to be per, it's going to be per end user, right? So whatever bigger agency is, that's going to be what they're going to quote you on, and then you're going to be good, yeah. No, I mean, for like, for, cause you guys offer on like expert witness testimony and stuff. Yeah. If you're yeah. covered, if you, if you, you know, you're still yeah. under, you're still under the GST program and stuff. Yeah. How does that work when you have multiple instructors teaching multiple disciplines? We will teach the thing. We will cover the things that we cover, right? Okay. So like, right. Like, so whatever we cover in the GST course and in previous, including previous courses will be covered moving forward. And then, uh, uh, all the new stuff you then can learn and teach yourself, right? So all that would also be covered. But if they teach something else and that person gets in trouble using that, then I cannot ensure that, right? So no, it makes because sense. you'll also learn whatever you want to learn, right? So I can only ensure you on the things that we show you. So. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. Um, where Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Because you're like, you're on top of the world right now, man. Like what what's next for Bernardo? Uh, so I've, I've been really enjoying this Gracie Medical side of the house, right? So where hospitals bring us in to teach their entire staff. So uh, currently, the current state of medical self-defense is uh, it's concerning, to put it mildly, right? So they learn some, some de-escalatory strategies, right? Which is talking to the person effectively, right? Trying to get them to calm down, but we all know how that goes, right? When the person doesn't want to calm down, you tell them to calm down is the arguably yeah. the least effective sentence in history so or you're telling someone <laughs> wife, telling someone yeah, freeze freeze so, it's like yeah fuck you guys so, <laughs> yeah yeah it's crazy so uh so yeah when that fails then they have like the then the 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 the, the whole system is based on you know like just just craziness you know oh hold them here twist them that way you know oh if you poke him here they stop you know yeah. just, l3 it's f yeah, kidney yeah, five. Like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah yeah it's a little bruce lee we're all, like not saying that bruce lee was ineffective but it's a little you know like it's a little yeah no bruce well that's the thing bruce lee was so in his realm like exactly yeah, trying to be no, bruce no, lee you're, man, you're, you're you know? full yeah. like he yeah, is so, so but it's a little it's, it was you know the whole thing is out there and then we're replacing it with Gracie Medical, and then Gracie Medical is sick. It also involves Safe Rap as a, is like Safe Rap is this right? Is this piece? And then Gracie Medical is like almost like GST has Safe Rap. Gracie Medical will have Safe Rap embedded in it as well. And, and then we you, have the transitions for Four Point. Uh, and how Four are you guys? Are, are you guys like reaching out to hospitals and and letting them know this is, this is a thing? Yeah. 
All yeah. Right. But I mean, I got, what's interesting is that not only we are reaching out to hospitals, hospitals are begging us to help them, right? I got because a hospital like, for you. Do not have an answer, right? And I don't know if you ever transported somebody to the hospital and then you drop him there and the security is like, what do I do now? Yeah, what do you or even the nurse yeah. are like, oh, shoot, right? What do I do now? Right? You're going to leave me with this person? Like, well, usually what they do is they bring out, you know, they, they bring out the stretcher. They have straps ready and, and then it yep. doesn't look good. That's what I'll tell you. It doesn't no. look good. No. So we did a Gracie Medical in uh, UC Irvine and it took 16 people to hold Henner down. How, did they pack a room? Like what? Yeah, Dude, we had 100 people there, right? We had 100 people there and this was the rule. Start with whatever hold you want. So he's in a check on a hospital bed, right? He's in a hospital bed. He's laying down. And they grab the two of the biggest guys there. And we say, hold them whatever way you want to. And then we'll say, go. And if you need help, yell for help. Every time they yell for help, another person jumps in and tries to help. That's There's what you see in policing. People. That's what you see in policing, this dog pile. Like, you yeah. don't know what oh, yeah. to do. So it's just well, more and more. You don't have more. a plan, right? If you don't have a plan, then it's a disaster, right? And what's also interesting about that is that two people that are proficient at fighting, but if they don't have a plan that's combined, they will also get in trouble. Often to the point where they get in each other's ways. It's very interesting. Now, they're better off than people that don't train, right? But it's a delusion that you, if you think that you only train yourself and your partner also only trains themselves, that they would then be able to... Um, to... Um, uh, to assist and to do anything, yeah. Yeah, so... Oh, good. <laughs> he lost his train of thought. Bro, you know how many times I'll be talking on here and I'll just be like, where was I going with this? <laughs> no, 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 no. So, yeah, so the idea is that like the, the people that, two people that are individually eff efficient and effective in tandem is not necessarily true that they will be as effective or nearly as effective, right? No, I've yeah, had makes times sense. where I was fighting and somebody tried to help and I'm almost like, get away from me. Well, because I can, I, I can do, I can do me better than you can, than me and you, which is a very weird thing. Bro, in, numbers, in my last apartment, working together. No, you're right. In my last apartment, um, I was rolling with someone, and help came, mm -hmm. and pepper sprayed us both. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> it essentially, made the situation worse because now I'm kind of in panic mode. This person's in yeah. panic mode. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. now I have another body that I don't know if it's this guy, this guy, because I can't open my. Yeah. Dude, so yeah, like if you're not communicating, which is a huge part of, of defensive huge tactics, yeah. de-escalate, like yeah. communication, man. Like if I'm looking at you and I tell you, hey, say a word, and we mm -hmm. got to say it at the same time. One, two, three, red. Boom. You yeah, aren't yeah. gonna huh? say that, right? But if I say, hey, yeah. we're, we're gonna say a color, like an apple. On three, one, two, three. Now we're on the same page, mm -hmm. but you have to start building that that communication yeah. and. You know, like a simple thing that we teach our guys is, you know, first off, it's like room clearing, right? Always go yeah. for the upper body, the hands, because the hands kill. The hands grab weapons, mm -hmm. the hands. Yeah. So if you're encountering someone, first person should be going for the hands. So mm -hmm. give yourself, we develop like a head nod, like, like, boom, that means, hey, you, and then they go, mm -hmm. boom, that means I received yeah. it. Yeah. Now, if some shit happens and you see that dude go for the hands, well, now you go for the legs. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. However, in room clearing, the first person's never wrong, right? Yeah. So yeah. instead of button hooking, he goes this way. You're not going to go that way too and go, bro, that was my that was my position. Yeah. No, yeah, so if course. they go down for the legs, the, you yeah. have to know You're and understand. Body, yeah. You have to go the upper body. Yeah. So um, communication is, is so crucial in this. And like people, yes. I, I go to a lot of trainings and people fight, 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 train, 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 and not a, not a word is said. Yeah. Yeah. You know, someone grabs your gun. We're training gun grabs, right? We're training mm -hmm. holster retention. Yeah. And you're not yelling, you know, gun, gun grabber. Gun, He's gun, got gun. my gun. Yeah. Or like to let yeah. your, your partners know yeah. or like civilians know like, hey, this is happening. This is happening. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's a key element in, in de-escalation and all this. And, mm -hmm. and that's something to consider. <sighs> yeah, brother. Well, I appreciate you for jumping on, man. This is another hour episode. That's crazy. Nice. Like, I could talk to you all day. Yeah, yeah, I literally can't. Bro. We can talk about anything. Yeah. But uh, where can people yeah. find out more about the Safe Rap and GST and, and and you if they want to follow your story and see what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Where can people keep up with all that? Yeah, so I'm very active on Instagram. That's probably the easiest uh, uh, platform that I use to uh, respond to you know any jujitsu questions, any life questions. I'm very available there. Uh, it's Bernardo SF93, and then uh, the handle at Safe Rap. You can go in there and. 
it would direct you to the page. Uh, under Grace University, there's an entire safe wrap uh, uh, tab that you can apply for inquiries for your department. If you're interested, you're welcome to apply there. And we'll hook it up, man, because we've been, we just want data and numbers and people to really, like, you know, try this and see what, what, like, you know, see how effective it is, right? Just like New York saw it and, like, all these other agencies, the LAPD, already they're like, man, we love this, you know, New York got it, what, what is it? Right, so we have the head guy for LAPD, he wanted to see it, corrections for LAPD, the entire state of Ohio, we're having discussions with them, right? So, to implement it statewide, not even, like, just not, not just law enforcement, right? Every defense agency, every, every like, firefighters, EMTs. Can you imagine if you showed up at a scene and the firefighters also knew safe rap or the EMTs also knew safe rap? How useful would it be to you or you fighting somebody and you look at them and you go, safe rap. They're like, yeah, safe rap. Boom. And then they jump on the legs. Come on, bro. That is the world I want to live in. Imagine a school where the kid is popping off and the teacher knows how to safe rap with the, with the, with the security guard. Yeah, the or, or gentle hold that we know, or SROs, right? Because like, you have yeah. a cop in the school, but like a cop mm-hmm. is not gonna treat a child in a school how he's gonna treat yeah. someone on yeah. the street. No, yeah. so that that makes sense. That's the, I, that's why we safe wrap children, we safe wrap women, we self safe wrap elderly, right? We safe wrap a guy that was eighty something, right? With the most gentle hold possible, he goes, "Hey man, can you breathe? Yes. Can you? Uh, can you? Is there any pressure on your chest or on your neck?" No. Can you skate? They go, no. How, how, what would it take for you to get to that thousand dollars? They go, I would never get it. Right? <laughs> so, and it's very interesting because it's like, are you hurt anywhere in your body? They go, no. Right? They say, oh, I had a, I had a hip problem or I have a knee problem. Oh, I used to have shoulder issues. Right? And all these people are getting safe wrap and none of them are getting hurt. There's no pressure on the neck. There's no pressure on the diaphragm. And man, if my grandpa popped off or my grandma popped off, she's 90, right? Just turned 90. If she popped off, because she, she started to have the, if it's not the case, but if she were to have dementia and she was popping off, I would safe wrap her. You see what I'm saying? Because it's the most humane way that I know to restrain a human being. And it just so happened to be also the most effective. Like, if, if like, I don't know, like, we're, we're actually, me and Big Dan were joking about this. We, we're like, because we're like, bro, like, I, I have no idea. We should try it on you, right? Because he's so big and he's Did so Did he let soft. you? Oh, I want to. I haven't had a chance yet, but I'll freaking love to. This is going to be so fun, right? And not only that, like, let's say hypothetically he does skate. Bro, how many people are him? It's but, not like, well, and that's, and, that's, and that's what people got to understand. It's like, crazy, yeah. No technique is 100%. No, but bro, what are we talking about here? But there the are system techniques, is amazing. The yes, system is so good. There are right? techniques that are more applicable and better off For sure. than, you know, like, I love when yeah, people, bro. when we go something like, well, can I get punched in the face here? Yeah, maybe. You're like, right? you're, like in, yeah. you're in a street fight. Like you're you're, you're yeah, dealing you with. Might some, get punched. Yeah, the you question is, what punched. kind of punch? Like yeah. you're not going to be knocked out. You're yeah. not going to lose. You know, you lose consciousness, but you you mm-hmm. may get punched. Yeah, that's that's a possibility when you take this job. Yeah, but so. it's very interesting because I was like, bro, if I were to try to hold you down, just so you know, and I had another person, this would uh, would be my preferred method. So it's funny because at the highest level, right, the strongest human I ever put my hands on by far. Is Big Dan, right? I was going to say, dude, stop. I was like, thank you. Huh? I was going to say, stop, no, bro, thank seriously. you. Oh, bro, it, it, it's me and everybody knows it, bro. He's so strong. And then on my grandma, I would have done the same thing. How crazy is that? Same that technique. That effective and that gentle, right? Yeah, that's in- that is and, interesting. I'm excited to see where this goes. Because came like, from the hospital setting, right? That's, that was what they, they, that's what they needed, right? They needed that. Can you imagine if you put pressure? If I if I if I side mount my grandma, I'll kill her. Yeah, or you you know it's you have true. some. I will kill her. I'll break have, like, all her ribs and kill her. A lot of things we have now, or, or dealing with, like the mental health crisis, is is getting crazy. It's no huge, bro. It's, and yeah, it's especially like with they, a, with the aging population too. Yeah, right? it's like you didn't like they didn't do anything wrong. They're just something's going on with them. Like you're not going to yeah, treat sure. them the yeah. same th- the same way as a dude approaching mm-hmm. you ready to punch you you know like yeah for sure yeah but the technique right? can what be applied to, to both kid, right he's 16 17 250 pounds right you show up on the house you're gonna beat him up i won't you know but Some i feel very will, confident though. safe wrapping that kid right yeah but believe me it's gonna be a it's a fight right because they're like potentially they're very strong potentially they, the drugs can have an influence there right potentially they're off their meds potentially they're very angry right so 
Yeah, man, you got you you have to be effective, right? So effectiveness is is still like you know it's still king. But can we do it in a way that's so gentle that I'll feel comfortable doing that to a kid, right? So and the answer is yeah, bro. I feel very good there. So yeah, it was funny because in LA we did the first safe rap demo ever in in the GST level two, right? And we grab a, the, the biggest guy we could find in the GST course is probably 250, 260, right? And then we safe wrapped him, right? But blah, 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 blah. three minutes, the guy's like, dude, I am exhausted. How is this possible? He's like, just kind of blown away, right? And then later we went to find out the guy had been training jiu-jitsu for 16 years. He was a black belt for, for a long time now. And we're like, oh, shoot, we had no idea. We don't know who the guy was, right? Because so often in the GST, you don't. And, so we and, just grabbed the life. biggest guy in the room and we're yeah. like, yeah, let's hold him down. Yeah. And in life, you're approaching people, you don't know, you know, unless you see cauliflower, then you got to uh, hold on. But, hold yeah, on. You, <laughs> but like yeah. now, you know, I, I know a lot of people starting to wear headgear and all this, and you don't got the cauliflower, so you don't know who you're dealing with. Yeah, that, blows my, that blows my mind. That's because you, you like to look good. You like to you like to look good. That's right, bro. Vanity. <laughs> I'm okay being a little vain. Yeah. But bro, my ears somehow, I don't know why, bro. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because they're a little like a little softer. But I don't get cauliflower ears. It's very, very difficult. Yeah. Cauliflower immune. You heard it here. Yeah, but you walk yeah. around like an Amazonian, bro. Like, look, someone looks at you like, don't fuck with that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's very rare. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a very special case to, to, to try, you know? Special case it is. Special it's case it's it is. very, very rare, you know? People used to try me more when I was younger. But I think as I got older and my the, the vibe changed, people were like, nah, man. How, how, how old are you? 31. You're you're yeah. my age, yeah, bro. I want to go play in traffic now. What? <laughs> thirty-one, I'm sitting, bro. I'm sitting here like this is a this is a seasoned, respectable man. Fucking thirty-one. You are a child, man. I'm you a are, child, bro. You are here doing life, old soul, bro. Amazingly, <laughs> bro. Not, not, let's give it up to the thirty-one year olds. Wow, I I, right. I need to step it the fuck up. You're a black belt at 31. I've been a blue belt for like three years. What's going on? Nah, bro, it's just different, different things, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Go, go ahead, right. go ahead. Make me feel better. That's what you do. You're a good guy. <laughs> Thank you. Nah, bro. Yeah, bro. The real question is, what would you do to you that didn't train? I'd murder him. Thank you for fun. Thank you. But so anytime uh, you forget, you know, because that's what we do. We don't. We don't have a. We, don't, we have a forgetting problem, right? We forget how capable we are. Even a blue belt, like, oh, I thought I was gonna be this at blue belt, and you're still upset. And you will be upset, like, you know? I was like, oh, I wish you could be Gordon, sure. You know, like, I, I want to be Henry Hiron eventually, right? Like, with all the love. Like, doesn't mean that, just because you beat somebody doesn't mean they're not valuable to you, right? No, absolutely, doesn't mean they yeah. can't be an asset, like, right? That's a ridiculous idea that people have, you know, that you have to be the top dog to be the most valuable one. That's not true, right? You not can add least. so much value, even, like, right? Like, I never won ADCC. I never even, uh, I've been to ADCC trials. I never won that. Never been to ADCC. And... I can be of service. I can be helpful. I can, you know, I can, I like, and I don't see myself as anything less or any less capable on that ability to relay a good message and be positive towards people. Right. Yeah. Can I beat him? No, probably sure. not. But I can be of service and I can be a valuable. Even, right? so, even if you do beat him, can he beat you? Yes. Like jujitsu. Sure. So yeah. like, it depends on the day, depends on how you feel. depends on like once, especially once you get to that level, it's like, you never yeah. know what can happen. One bad roll, you're thinking about, you're thinking about the steak waiting for you at the end of the day, and then you know he gets yeah. like jujitsu. Same thing with MMA. You know, people see this fighter. How did he lose? You're in a combat sport. You get punched mm -hmm. one time. It can end your one, end your fight. Two, end weird. your career. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, it, it's, yeah it's, it's so it's crazy mm -hmm. how it happened. Like I was training. I've done this. I've done, I've done this drill that I did hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. This is the time my meniscus said mm, not today. But um, yeah, yeah. you just never, you never know, man. It's, it's all circumstantial. Yeah. That's true. Well, I appreciate you for jumping on, man. Uh, Thank you, bro. Always fun. I'm going to bring you on periodically. We're just going to talk life. I need Perfect. your old soul to pour into me, man. That's what I need. <laughs> Perfect. Let's make it happen. Yeah. All right, brother. Um, don't forget that sleeper hold. I got you. Don't yeah. forget to see me in Vegas. I will. You, you're recovering, right? Yeah. Uh, we're going to recover real well. We're going to recover yeah, real yeah, no, well. <laughs> <laughs> that but, uh, fantastic. <laughs> uh, what last, last thought for folks, if you can tell, if you can give someone one piece of advice, only one, what would you Ooh. give them? Oof. 
That's usually where I get people. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah. I'll probably say, you know, be a little kinder than necessary, maybe, you know. I think that's a good that's be a good way to go necessary. about life. It, it won't it won't hurt you, you know. And it might burn you sometimes, but in a long enough time span, it will serve you more than it'll burn you. I had too many I had too many times where I was very kind and courteous that I didn't see where it would lead to, that it, it helped me in ways that were unbelievably possible. So uh even even like briefly, right? So uh I taught one of the one of my private students is a former commander for for the teams for the Navy SEALs and uh, like tier one like bad dude I don't know how else to say it. top of the food yeah bro, top of the top a, yeah that's a awesome proper bad dude right and I taught him free private lessons for years probably five six seven seven it's probably going into eight years now right every Monday Wednesday Friday we come in the morning. Two hours, the guy is a killer. He was already a black belt, he was a brown belt, and I was helping him out, right? Because I was coming up so fast. But he was like, he's like, dude, I love how you teach. Like, I love your energy. You're so, like, you, you're very good, you know? Like, even though, like, he's like, dude, who cares about the belt? You know, nobody cares about the belt. You know, especially at that level, nobody cares about the belt. People care how good you are, right? Boxing has no belts, and yet we know who the champion is, right? Yeah. So, and it's just, it's just you know, it's just a, uh, it's a directionally correct, Perfect metric, far from it, but it's it's just directionally kind of right. But uh, but he's like, dude, I love I love your energy. And for years, I taught this guy for free. Amazing, amazing dude. He's helped me in so many things. But one thing that I did not see coming was he was my link to be able to go train with John. After all these years of me giving my time, my knowledge, and my you know my my hard work, because I believe in what he did, and I'm thankful for what he did. That's why I did it. I'm like, bro, you fought for this country. You fought for my peace. I'm sitting in this office right now. I am chilling. I know nobody's going to come through, you know, as a, as a function of terrorists, right? Because you guys did a good job out there, right? I don't know how many how many bad people you put under the dirt to for where I can sleep peacefully, right? So I'm so thankful for that. And that's why I want to give you, like, all the time that you, that you want, bro. Like, because you deserve it. And then uh, you earned it. So... And so often people don't recognize it enough, right? So then he goes to an event, a, a Navy SEAL Foundation event, and John was there. And John has a student that's also a SEAL. They're walking together, and you know how they like to bust each other, right? Like the, oh, the yeah. SEALs always say, they, they love to talk a little bit of smack, right? Oh, that guy's a, that guy's a, what, like, you know, that guy's a, a wimp, blah, 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 you know? <laughs> you can say it, you can say it. He's a pussy. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, so it's like, oh, then, and then finally he saw my guy, and he's like, Oh, dude, and then, dude, that guy is that guy is, is a legend. The, the 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 Navy SEAL said that to John. He's like, what? John's like, I never heard you talk about anybody like this. What do you? What? Are, who is this guy? So he goes introduces himself, and he and then John goes, Hey, man, anytime you want to uh, come train with me, I'll give you a free private lesson. Come to Austin, and I'll give you a free private. So he goes there, takes the free private, and John is impressed. He's like, man, you move very well. Like you're very like. Especially for your age, like, wow, who's your teacher? He goes, oh, you got to meet Bernardo. Bernardo's a freaking, freaking amazing. And that's how John goes. Like, Mark gives my phone number to John, and that's how the connection happened, bro. It's and crazy, how, how, it's crazy how that happens, bro. It's crazy bro, how it's that happens. It's crazy, bro. Seven years, eight years later, it was one potentially one of the biggest steps of my professional development as a jiu-jitsu person was over this. And I give, 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 and you don't see anything, right? And that's the part that nobody sees. Right? But then you finally make it there and they're like, oh, how did that happen? Right? And it's because you're willing to give and it will serve you more than you think. So I, I second that, man. I, I walk around doing the same exact thing. Like I, I, I treat everyone with grace and kindness and mm -hmm. it does I, not, not to get benefit from, but because <laughs> I, I genuinely feel good when I treat yeah. people good and do good things. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm doing this po podcast and like people are now like asking me to come on, like, Dude, someone like you, I met you in a yep. class. You were my instructor, uh -huh. you know, and now we're like, oh, bro, let's jump on. Let's talk. Like we got to talk live. We yeah. got to talk this. And it's like, you know, you have a huge link to people. You treat people the same way I treat people. Like who knows mm -hmm. where this relationship could go. But I, I had people donating, you know, a very good friend of mine who I met through college is being cool. One of my biggest mm -hmm. donors now, one of my biggest sponsors. Yeah. Boom. And, there you go. And, and that's just, 
I didn't expect any of it. I never even asked him. We mm-hmm. were talking. He's like, "Hey, yeah. bro, like I love what you're doing, bro. Let me, let me, let me pay you this check to." I'm like, "Nah, you don't gotta do that, bro. Like we're boys." He's like, "Nah, man, I want to do this. I want to do this for the podcast, for for the store. Like that's Nico, uh, homie of mine from Jersey. So if you're ever in Jersey, he's trying to get into jujitsu." Uh-huh. Uh, hey, Nico Carbo, yeah. bro, Carbo Jewelers. He'll get you a nice little little Gracie logo on your chain. But um, no. bro, one of my biggest one of my biggest sponsors now, and uh, well, well, the only sponsor that I've ever accepted. I've had a lot of people, and that's just from a good relationship. I never yeah. asked him for anything. He's like, nah, yeah. bro. Like, I really believe in what you're doing. Like, you're talking to cool people. You're sharing their stories. Like, boom. And then because of that. Now my now the floodgates have opened. People are like, oh, can I sponsor? Can I sponsor? I'm like, this this is not what I wanted this show to become. Like, I don't want to be yeah, yeah. sponsored by everyone. But when I believe in what people are doing or these companies are doing, and I can align with it, like mm-hmm. the Gracies have my respect for a long time. The Sleeper yeah. Hold is a fucking awesome product. Like, I, yeah, it's just mm-hmm. it just makes sense, you know. It's yeah, like, yeah. but it's all from good relationship. Yeah, like, good relationship, being kind to people, and if you get burned. That's a testament to that okay. person, not to you. Yeah. 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 You know, oftentimes people are like, oh man, I keep getting taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. Nah, either, but just wait. It'll yeah, be worth either it. you don't yeah. enjoy being good to people. Mm-hmm. Because if you truly enjoy being good to people, you get taken advantage of. It's like, oh man, that's unfortunate for them because I was ready to pour into them. Yeah, for sure. I agree, bro. Yeah. Like it's it's something that's, that, that will serve you. Again, lo- lo- like, you know, just purely based on the odds, you're better off being that way. So, you know. That was yeah. good advice. I'll give you, kind, I give you 10 you know, out of 10. Be kind and be dangerous, you know? That's a good that's hey, a good thing. Be the warrior in the garden. <laughs> that's right. Not the that's gardener right. in the war. The war. Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you, Bernardo, for jumping on. This is the one with this is another one with Bernardo, because this right. is the second episode. Make sure you catch his first one early on. Um, bro, I appreciate you and I'll see you in Vegas, homie. Appreciate you, bro. See you in Vegas, brother. Hey, Boom. Later. Hey, later.